Welcome back to Orange Hat Reviews. We're going to be going over the spoiler for Godzilla, the spoiler review. Objectively, I am changing my score. It is going to be a little bit lower. It's going to be 4 out of 5 because they're, now that I'm no longer on the Godzilla hype, I gotta look at it more objectively. Um, it is 4 out of 5 because there is a bit more or a bit too much human action again and the cutting was the editing cutting back and forth was too chaotic I did not like how they kept on going back to the humans and whatnot but they still had a good balance overall I love the soundtrack they harken back to the original themes which is awesome I mean seriously they did very good with the soundtrack the editing the special effects and whatnot so, other things that I had problems with, they just kept on cutting back and forth, like I said, but also, they didn't put in certain things that I wish they would have. The, or there was a Muto in this movie that was alive, a female version, and I'm like, how is that still, go? or how is, it made no sense that a Muto would be around. They explain in Aftershock that they, uh, or the Aftershock comic that Muto Prime is basically laying these things in to God, or Godzilla species stomach linings and whatnot. So yeah, that made no sense. But then again, there could have been another Godzilla one out there. Who knows? It, that's a plot hole, basically. Um, so that's my problems with the movie. They could have done a couple things better. They had a little bit too much campiness for my taste. But overall, subjectively, I give this a 5 out of 5, and moviegoer 5 out of 5. It's entertaining, and it keeps you engaged. I love how they did Mothra. Even her larval form was beautifully done. They have a good twist in here instead of two fights that everybody was theorizing between Ghidorah and Godzilla. There's three fights. The Oxygen Destroyer makes a comeback from the original Godzilla 1954 movie. That was beautifully done, how they introduced the Oxygen Destroyer. Very visually stimulating. Um... Yeah, I like how Rodan came out. How he kind of just beats his way out of the cap that they had in the, vol or in the volcano. After they unleashed his frequency with that orca machine. Turns out Emma Russell was with the terrorists, or planning with the terrorists all along. But, um... Yeah, the movie kicks off from San Francisco 2014, where the Russells are looking for their son, Andrew, who unfortunately was killed. And they see Godzilla with his 2014 spines, so they kept that faithful. That was good. And Mark Russell just wants to kill Godzilla. He left Monarch to do his own thing, but studying animals and behavior patterns and whatnot. But after the terrorists attack the Mothra facility and Mothra escapes, Sarazel and them are in a Senate hearing and they end up leaving the Senate hearing because of the attack on the Mothra base. The terrorists go straight for Ghidorah. Basically, they were, it was like a diversionary tactic. But people, or Godzilla ends up at the at their Castle Bravo base, which does the whole intimidation display, which was very cool. Um, Ghidorah gets woken up. They fight. That was pretty damn well done. Now, for Godzilla fans who were seeing the trailers and complained about overhype, they're right, because there wasn't much that could um, outdo what we saw in the trailers. That was another problem. They oversold the hype for fans, but Michael 
authorities stated too late when the movie was freaking released not to watch it. It's like, well, too late. We already did, you dumb ass. But anywho, uh, this, they kept true to Ghidorah's extraterrestrial origin because Godzilla ends up ripping off one of his heads and it ends up growing back after the oxygen destroyer wipes out or almost wipes out Godzilla. And Ghidorah goes basically to the volcano and his head regrows. I love how they have the individual personalities because the center head's always picking on the left head because it's likes to I guess play with its food. Vivian Graham from the first Godzilla movie, she ends up getting eaten by Ghidorah, which is like, oh my god, seriously? That that's terrible, man. Really, that is. I liked her character. And then Sarazawa sacrifices himself when they find Godzilla thanks to Mothra because when she hatches, she makes a beeline to Castle Bravo and she basically puts the humans on the right track to find Godzilla. They realize he's in an area with, where there's heavy radiation pocket and nobody can go in there without dying and they bring a nuke to revive Godzilla. Sarazawa does the trip and he says goodbye my friend or old friend to Godzilla and I'm like what is that about you know but it's a callback if you think about it Sarazawa was the one who killed Godzilla in the original or a character named Sarazawa and whatnot so they give him a boost he's uh Godzilla gets juiced up on the, from the nuke. He gets, or he's able to revive and whatnot. He does his little call to arms. I love that. That was great. Ghidorah did his uh, roar after his head, or one of his heads grew back, and he woke up all the Titans, which was not part of the plan. But then again, humans making plans never work out. So yeah. um... I like how Rodan was very intelligent in his actions when he when he got out there he was very good. Mothra, she was very good herself. She could go toe to toe with Ghidorah for a little bit if she did the whole surprise attack kind of thing, which she did. She surprise attacked Ghidorah near the end. Rodan then came in to take her out of the fight. Or to get her away from the main fight between Godzilla, Revived, and Ghidorah. I loved the run. I loved how when those two collided from the trailers, it's like there was a shock wave of, uh, basically just a shock wave that it was very cool. The outposts for Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan are basic. Easter eggs, where Mothra's east or outpost is the same year that her character was introduced into the original Toho MonsterVerse. Ghidorah's is 32, which is half of 64, which was his introduction, and Rodan was 56, which was the year he came into life in the Toho universes. That was pretty interesting. Um, they had a form of burning Godzilla, but it's not burning Godzilla. I'd call it fire Godzilla. Mothra does do her sacrifice play. She gives channels her energy into Godzilla. And the way that Ghidorah is wiped out is freaking amazing with the atomic burst the titans end up coming to boston and bowing before godzilla at the end including a female muto which i just don't understand why it was there <sighs> but yeah there's these other ones then there's the post credit scene during the main credits rolling they set up the godzilla versus kong how titans are heading towards godzilla or skull island 
with newspaper clippings and whatnot, reporting on all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, the head that Godzilla originally tore off of Ghidorah is found near Ila de Mara in the end credit scene, and it sets up for another movie. And I'm thinking they might be messing or bringing in Destroya or something similar, which I think would be awesome. So that's the review, guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. This has been Orange Hat Review, and you all have a good night, and I'll see you all on the next one.